Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to consume a user-defined table type that you defined in SQL Server. And we're going to call that from C Sharp. Stick around, learn all these skills. On YouTube, look for software nuggets. Scroll down until you see the two steps. You got to have these skills. Here is the user-defined table type app I was talking about. If you click on this, view the source code, you know, the messages underneath, you will see all the source code that I've already given. So all you have to do is go and cherry pick that out of there. And next thing you know, you can create the tables and create the user defined data types as well as the store procedure. So pretty much no work for you. In fact, it's probably be a good idea to re review this video, you know, get yourself back up to speed. And then we will uh, proceed with this video about consuming these resources in your database. Excellent. Okay, step one, select your database and then let's create this table called purchase order. Notice the columns go from four to 12. Look at the data types and uh, let's get that typed in. That's step one. Step two, PO detail lines. This is another table. Let's create this table and just, just come here, highlight that and execute it. Make sure that you're in the same database as the first table. And then we'll be able to proceed. Now this is our first user defined table type. Notice I'm calling this purchase order type as table. And pretty much these are my columns. And this is our user defined ta table type. You can uh, highlight this, execute it, and that will be stored in your database. And here is our last user defined table type. This is for the details, PO detail type as a table. And these are our columns. Just highlight this, make sure you're in the correct database, and then hit the execute button. Let's start Visual Studios. And the first thing we want to do is create a console app. And then we're going to come in here and right click on this and say Nougats. Where's uh, Manage Nougats right here. And then we're going to come over here and browse and SQL Client is this first one. Click that and then yours will say install. So you need to install that. And then that will give you all of these things that we need to make this program connect to your database as well as do the data table stuff. Okay, so get that all done and then you'll be where I'm at right now. Now the next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to start off in our program. Make sure you have these two usings at the top. Well, actually all four of them. System, system.configuration, system.data, system.data.sql client. So you're gonna need all four of them. Whatever your namespace is, is it's not important. So. We're going to step into uh, main and the reason this says static is because we're running a console app. So that's why that says static. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a class called SQL connect and SQL connect kind of looks like this. So I have my two things that are extra data and SQL client. And then I'm going to declare a variable of int as int error level, a string string last message. And then public system data, SQL client, SQL connect. Then my variable is called DB con. And I'm going to initialize that to null. Notice here, I'm going to be using a public enum and I'm going to make it of type integer and I'm going to initialize the values from zero to three. What are attributes? Well, what happens is uh, when I connect to SQL Server, I want to set up the username, passwords, and all these. So notice that these are private variables, and I have a public string that looks at these private. So username would point to this one. So just hit pause and then just type those in. So, and that finishes those. Okay, great, excellent. And that's what I put in my region. Now we're going to say public void connect from app config. Now what's app config? Well, 
AppConfig is a file where we can put settings. And notice it normally just comes out and it says configuration, open, close. And then you have to go add app settings. Then notice that I have a username, password, the server name, the catalog, and then whatever app name I want to use. Now I have banged out my username password. You don't need to know those. You need to know what's on your computer though. And this is the name of my server. It's a local instance running on my computer and uh, there's nothing on there. So there's nothing there. So anyways, get this app settings done and then uh, you'll kind of be where I'm at. Now once you're there, we're gonna be using this system configurator and we're gonna load in those username, password, server, catalog, and app name into variable names. And then here's the gold. See that open command? We're gonna like open and connect to that database. Now when you open to that database, notice I'm gonna be getting the server version and that's gonna go into this local variable. And I'll be setting up some other global variables as well. And uh, that is the end of this method. It's pretty easy. Any way you connect, even if you use Entity Framework, you just need to be able to connect to your database. This can probably be done in like five lines. So now we have our connect. Now we can go look at our main again. So notice here, I'm gonna say connect, connect from config. Notice connect from config will come down there and its goal is it is going to do that open command. That open command is gonna open the connection between this application and your database. Cool. All right, save that. Now, now we gotta look at two things. We have two objects. Let's just pause for a moment and let's see what's going on. Just a moment ago, I told you that we need to go and create some SQL Server table types. My first one is called purchase order type. It is of type table and these are the columns. Look at it. Purchase order. PO order ID, order date, customer ID, order total cost, create date and create user. Look at the name of my columns over here. They're exactly the same. Case is very important. Everything is in lower case, okay? The next one that we're gonna be looking at is the PO detail type. Notice that those also use all lower case and they map up one to one. So notice, PO order ID, line number, item ID, quantity, unit price, item description, total, line total cost, and create user. So you see how these map up. Now this is the data. Let's don't be confused to what we're doing here. We're actually working with data, a data row object. And here I said, see how I said uh, var PO, make purchase order type? Let's go see what I did there. Notice here, I'm just using just some simple data table commands. This has to be the name of your object. And these have to be the name of your columns. You can't be creative in here. You should have been creative when you created your user defined data type. So now we're just gonna figure out what its column name is, what its data type is, and then we are gonna keep adding it to this data. See how I say data table, column add DC. So column and data type. So I'm just going through there and I keep adding them to the data table. At the very end, I say return data table. Our return value of this function on line 52 is of type data table. Now our second object was called make PO detail type. And I'm following the same practice. That is the name of the the data type. So when I said create, see how this spelling and that spelling is identical? So you can't be creative now. You have to spell it just the way you see it. And then you have to put in all of these columns into this structure. Now we just start with PO order ID and we go all the way down to create user. Everything is in lower case. And the data types have to be the same thing that we have to find over here. So these data types have to be the same data types that I'm using here, or it will not map up. Once again, you have to spell it the way I spelled it inside of SQL Server. And those are our two master tables. Now notice after I build the tables, I'm gonna populate it with some data. 
Now that data is using a, whatever this object's name is, new row. And then I just take the column names and then I put a value in here. And then for the second object, DET, I say DET new row. And notice that I put a one row in this guy. And then I say DT rows dot add detail. Notice the name of this object is detail. This was called work row. Excellent. Now check it out. I'm now going to create a SQL command. And this is the name of my store procedure. Look at the name of my store procedure. Proc save shopping cart order. I have two variables. One variable is called master. The other one is called details. Notice they are of type user defined table type. Make sure you put this read only in there or you'll be having problems. So master detail. Now notice here, create parameters master details. Now PO is the actual object that we created up here. And that uh, our record was assigned to that PO. And just like with details, we created that data structure and then we assigned one row to that object. So notice here, command parameters, master PO details DET. Then I'm going to execute a reader command and this is going to call that store procedure, pass in these two parameters and it will execute that. I'm then going to close this connection. Now, when we go and do a select statement on this, these two datas, data tables, let's see what we have in there. Notice I have two tables, one called purchase order, the other one called PO detail lines. When we were up on this line right here, notice that I said the order ID was 100, the customer ID was 100, and Scott J is the guy that did that. Well, let's look at purchase order. Execute, and notice 100, 100. Do we uh, put a value in there? Okay, that's gonna be down here on this one, but do you see how we're seeing the data? And now for the PO lines, execute, and notice that we got our order 100, our item 100, 650, 1950. I used a timestamp. If you don't understand timestamp, I got an awesome video that teaches that inside out. There's no way you can go wrong having that in your mind. And there you have it. That is the way you do this type of program. Being able to call a user defined data type through the C Sharp programming language. Okay team, hang in there. And all you have to do is follow the steps.